Hello and welcome to part four of our wave game mode uh, series. In this episode, we are going to work on our widget so we can actually see what wave number we're on, how many enemies we've got left, and when we've entered our transition phase. So let's get started and put our widget together. So last time we were here, we got our wave system working. And if I kill 10 of these, it will transition into another wave. Yep, there you go. And then wait a couple of seconds and it should go again. There we go. And it keeps on going. So obviously that is not very accessible to us on screen. We want to be able to see that. Uh, so this being spawning, by the way, this finished spawning actor, these errors happen when uh, there's something blocking the spawn of it. So what we're going to do is we go to the enemy spawners and just fix that slightly and change the collision handling override to... Um, Try to adjust location, but always spawn. Do that. There you go. Um, yeah, so uh, we need to show this on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some basic widgets for this and show how to tie this together. So we're going to go to user interface in the menu and choose a widget blueprint. You use a widget. And we'll do wave mode HUD. And open this up. And in here, we're going to have a canvas panel. And inside that canvas panel, we're going to have text. In fact, I'm going to wrap this with a vertical box. Because we're going to have two texts. One's going to keep track of how many we've got left to kill. And one's going to keep track of the wave number. So I'm going to go to my vertical box and just size that and place that where I want it to go. I'm just going to anchor it a bit in the screen a bit by 100 by 100. There we are. This one would be wave number, so I'll just put wave number. And this one here will be um, hills remaining. And also make that font a little bit smaller just for some niceties. There we go. So both of these need to be variable. So we're going to take the is variable box and tick it and name them. So text underscore hills remaining. Wave number is going to be variable and text wave number. And then compile that. Now, the way this works is that we need to bind these numbers to events that are happening on our game mode. So let's go to our game mode and set up these events. So on the game mode here, we're going to create a event dispatcher for a variety of things. The first one we do is on new wave. When a new wave happens, it's then going to trigger and return what wave it's going to have. So we can actually do that on inputs and trigger out the integer of the wave number that we are sending over. Done. We can also say on enemy killed. On enemy killed. So we know when to update the kills remaining. That will want to have an input as well for remaining. You may also want on a new wave to send over uh, whoops, send over the integer for the remaining kills as well, remaining enemies. Because you'll probably want to know that at the start of the round as well. So, and finally we're going to have another one for uh, on end wave. And that will be called by the transition. So I'm going to go to enter transition and just call end, end wave. Call that there in fact actually we could put that in the end wave function we made let's cut that and put that in the end wave function put that in there and on where we just were and enter transition we'll just call the end wave function uh new wave we're gonna go to new wave function and add the new wave so do call and that's going to need the wave number which we can get from our variable list and we also need the remaining, so enemy remaining, and pop that in there. We also need to go to enemy defeated, so enemy killed. So let's go to an enemy defeated. And in the middle here, before we do branch off either way, we can do on enemy killed. Call that. 
and plug in enemy remaining into there. So what we're doing is we're basically putting a load of little hooks that our widget can hook onto and read information from. So let's go back to our widget, go to the graph, and on the construct event, we get our game mode, cast to our first person game mode. And good idea to promote to a variable while you're there, might as well. And then we do a lot of bindings. So bind event to new wave. And we'll do a custom event for that. New wave. And we're going to set the wave number and remaining to the text value. So wave number, get, set, text. There we are. And the text for this will do a format text node. And I'll put in wave number, colon, and in curly brackets, we'll put in a curly bracket. When I hit enter, it's going to add A as a parameter. So if I plug the wave number into A, it's going to insert it in at that point in the format text box. Okay, and let's do the same thing, but for remaining. And this will be enemies remaining. Again, with A, we'll put remaining in there. <clears throat> okay, that's when the new wave happens. Now, when we kill an enemy, we need to attempt to update the remaining. So, we're going to take out from as third person game mode again. Find event on enemy killed. And plug that in to another custom event. And that'll be enemy killed. And what we're going to be doing in here is we're going to take this same enemy remaining text. We're going to take that, copy that, paste that, and plug that in. And the remaining will go to A. It does the same thing, just updates it. Okay, and that'll do. So we now need to add our UI to the screen. So I'm just going to go back to my game mode, go to the event graph, and on begin play, we're going to do uh, create a widget. Oh, hello. Might pay attention to that one. Create widget. Choose our wave mode HUD. And promote to variable, so we've got a reference to it, HUD. And then add to viewport. Compile, save. So let's take a look at that in game. So we've got wave number and kills remaining. As you can see, nothing's happening. But if I were to shoot, we can see 10, uh, it's gone down to 9, 8, 7, and so on. And one left square. Where are you? Play up. And that will then trigger and wave number should start saying wave number one, two, so on. But it's not. Interesting. Okay, let's work out why that's not happening. So our wave mode HUD is not getting this wave number update. Why not? Ah, up, up, there you go. That's my problem. I use the unbind event. Silly me. It's bind event to wave, new wave, there we go. That usually helps if you get the right node. Right, let's try that again. So wave number, you can still see the wave number is still not working. Let's just see if it works on the next round. If it is, it's just a timing issue then. Uh, one left, there we go. And wave number should update. Yep, so wave two, and we're doing 10. So that wave number wasn't getting updated at the start. And the reason why is probably just a timing issue. So we're calling new wave, creating the widget, and the widget is doing the bindings after new wave has done this call of new wave. So what I can do here is put this new wave after I've built the widget. Put that in there, and then put new wave afterwards. So, play, and there you go, it's starting off with 1 and 10, just as we want it. Perfect. And then 
go up to two and it's raining 10 again okay. so all i want to do now is add the transition phase uh timer to this thing so we know when wave next wave is beginning so let's go to our hud again and design a view and i'm going to add a text block in here and anchor it to the top center Hold down Control and Shift, and it will position it correctly for you. And I'm going to move that down in the wire. So I'm going to do uh, 400. Yeah, that'll do. And we'll just call this one New Wave Beginning. Okay. And I'm going to set that to size to content so it fits it perfectly in the center. And I'm also going to wrap it with a vertical box because I'm going to put a progress bar underneath it for the timer. So I'm going to wrap that with a vertical box and put a progress bar in there too. So I've got a little progress bar up here in here. So on this progress bar, this is going to fill up when the wave is, um, well, we can make it go down, new wave beginning or going up, it depends on where you want to go. It's going to then output and say like, when it's going to happen. But we only want this thing to show up when we are actually in a transition. So this vertical box here needs to be variable. So tick the variable box for that. And we'll do transition box. And the default visibility for this is going to be hidden. And on the graph, I'm going to do the binding now for that. So drag out my game mode variable. Bind event um, end wave. There you go. And on that, we're going to go custom event and do on end wave. And what that's going to do is we're going to drag out our transition box and change its visibility. So set visibility to visible. And then we want to um, tell our UI to update the, the progress bar based upon our tick event. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our tick event. And in here, we're going to have a gate. And it's good because we don't need to open all the time. We can open it when we change the visibility of this. So that will go down to open. Close will come from when we start a new wave. So new wave, we could drag a line from the end of that into our close there. And on the gate here, we can now just tell our progress bar to update. So get progress bar, set percent. And the percentage of that is set to our game modes timer. So drag it out and get the timer for our transition. And now we can get the elapsed time and the remaining time. Because what we need to do is make it a normalized value. So we need to work out how long it was set up first of all uh, to begin with, and then uh, work out the percentage it's been used up so far. So for this, we can do normalize to range. The value we're going to use up, it depends on which way direction you want to go, down or up. I'm going to use time remaining for that into value. And the range max will be the, the sum of these two together. Now go into range max. And then the final result will go up to in percent. Okay, and there we go. Um, we also need to say on the new wave here to hide the thing again. So let's put that back in, transition box, set visibility. And take it to make it hidden again. So when a new wave begins, it just hides it. Compile and save that. So let's take a look at that in action. So no message on the screen, good. And until I clear all of my guys here. And new wave beginning. Time counts down, and then it should disappear when a new wave begins. Trick shot, cool. Let's clear these ones. Now three. New wave beginning. So there you go. We've now got our hooks into the widget, and it's now updating and reacting to what we do in the game. 
Now, what we're going to do next is go back and take a look at how we make our energy pool more varied. So how do we determine what should be in each wave in their counts? So you can watch our next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you find all my videos early from just $1 a month. I said thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.